Hey everybody, it's Derek Colmartin from CodeOpinion.com. A common approach to testing is creating mocks, specifically defining interfaces for your dependencies so you can mock them in test in isolation. While interfaces are useful for mocks or stubs or fakes, there are other approaches you can take, meaning you do not need to create an interface for everything. I'm gonna show a couple different examples that's really about the design that still allows you to test in isolation but doesn't require interfaces or mocks. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So hopefully this video is like many of my other videos where I try to be pragmatic. I think your context matters. You can make decisions based on your situation. So this isn't a anti-mocks video or anti-interfaces. It's not really the case. It's just describing that there's other ways based on design that you can still test in isolation, just not requiring you to create interfaces or mocks. So all the examples that I'm using here are my modified version to kind of illustrate of the eShop on web sample application. So I've chained this around a little bit to kind of illustrate some of the points that I want to make. So I'm looking at this order service, which is about basically taking a shopping basket and converting it into an order. So what I've done here is I've kind of created different versions of progressions that I'm going to show through this. And one of the things that I want to illustrate, which I think is somewhat typical that you see in a lot of code bases, is the idea of time. So we have a bunch of different dependencies. We have this basket repository, a item repository for the catalog, our order repository, and this UI composer. Now this code really isn't that big of a deal other than it's getting the shopping basket out, it's using these repositories, and then we're creating our order. The thing that I really want to illustrate here is that we have this date time UTC now that we're adding a part of our order that's kind of like our order date. So what I've done is created a test for this order service. That's probably typically what you would think it would be. I have to create a bunch of different mocks and set up for these different I repositories for the basket, the order, the catalog item, that URI composer. And here's my test. So I'm creating the order service, passing in all our different mocks. And when I call create order async, I'm passing the relevant data, this basket ID and our address. And then I was just asserting that the shipping address is what we passed in so that we're making sure that gets set correctly. And here's kind of where this test, as I mentioned, is flaky in my name, is that we're expecting the order date to be now. But the problem is, is that UTC now within our order service, when we call it, won't be exactly the same as what we're gonna be asserting on. Now, maybe we could have been a little bit more lenient on the assert because we can see the expected and actual. It's really just the milliseconds. So maybe we remove the milliseconds and assert against that. But really that's not the answer because we're still likely gonna be flaky. What we really want is just to be deterministic. And we can't do that with having UTC, daytime UTC now directly in the order service. So maybe the thought then is, okay, well let's create an iDaytime interface that has a UTC now, and our actual implementation for that uses exactly that, uses daytime UTC now. Then for our tests, we can, like everything else, like our repositories, create a mock or a stub. And here's what the code looks like. So I've done all this refactor. I have now an interface iDateTime. We have one signature here that's gonna be UTC now that's gonna return the daytime offset. Then when I go over to our implementation, I have our class, our daytime service, that's implementing that interface. And it's really just returning daytime UTC now, just like we were using within our order service itself. So for illustration, I'm also registering that with Microsoft DI because it's an ASP.NET Core app. So we're just doing that registration here, right here. And then if I look at our order service, I created another implementation just to illustrate this. So now our constructor is we're injecting that I date time. And then if we look at our create order async, which previously was just using daytime UTC now. Now we're using that interface that we're injecting and calling it. So the end result is really gonna be the same in terms of runtime at production, but now for our test, we can look at this new test that I created. I'm creating a mock just like I was with the repositories. I could have created my own implementation of the iDateTime and returned to just using it as a fake, which essentially this mock is doing. So now we just have some deterministic date time that I'm creating here. And then when I run this test, we can confirm that UTC now, which is our specific date time, is gonna be what's on our order. And this test passes. Now I often like to say, if you have a class with one method, you really just have a function. 
Even if you're injecting dependencies in the constructor, if you have one method, you really just have a function that you could be to passing those dependencies to the function, doing method injection. Same thing when you really think about the interface, if you have all these different methods on your interface that really aren't related to each other in terms of that they don't interact, there's no backing state to it, you really could just have a bunch of functions. So really what the way I'd like to describe it is what's the difference here if I have this interface or just the delegate? So what I'm gonna do is rather, I'm just gonna use this delegate, I'm gonna remove the interface. So we have a de delegate called UTC now that returns the daytime offset. I'm gonna jump over to our implementation and instead I'm gonna make this static, I'm gonna remove this interface and we're gonna make this method static. The reason I'm doing this is because now I can jump over to our registration and now we don't have that interface, but rather we have our delegate that I can register. So from here, I can do datetime service .utc now. So now we're just registering our delegate with our static method. And what I've done is I've already actually already implemented this. This is a order service delegate class I created. It's pretty much just a copy, but rather instead of injecting the interface, I'm just injecting the delegate. And the same thing as before, I'm really just calling it here and passing that date time along. So really this isn't that much different. We're just injecting a delegate rather than an interface because of really our implementation was just one method. So now if I look at our actual tests, I've created one here called test with delegate where I'm determining that UTC date time. I'm just creating some static date time. Again, it's something that we know we can guarantee we're gonna get back. It's deterministic. And what I'm doing is when we have to inject that, I'm just injecting that actual delegate with our return value. So we're just completely um, stubbing this out with the value that we want. And when we assert our daytime UTC now that we're getting here, that we're defining, is gonna be what our order date is and the test passes. Now, one thing to touch on with this specific example, and you might've already been thinking it, is okay, well, why don't you just pass that daytime offset to the create order async? Like instead of having to inject an interface or delegate to get what the current UTC now is, why not just pass the whatever you want the order date to be? And that's actually a fair point in this example. So I have another example here where I've done exactly that. Is in, I'm not injecting an interface, I'm not injecting a delegate. Rather, I just changed the signature of our create order async to set a parameter of the order date, which is our date time offset. And then I'm just using that to pass that along like we were within our order. So if we just look simply at our test at that point, it's really even simpler now. We don't have any type of mock. We don't have a stub. We don't need to worry about any of that stuff. We're just passing in the date time that we want our UTC now, our date time offset here, and we're asserting the same way. So this actually kind of simplifies it in this specific example. So another example quickly to kind of drive this home when it's something out of your control that you're depending on, not everything provides the interface, but usually they'll provide a way that you can hook into the system that you can test um, various aspects of that behavior. So my example here is I have an exchange rate client. And of course, right, I've created an interface, which is feasible because whatever's gonna depend on this, yes, maybe I just want to stub or mock that out. But when I'm actually testing my implementation of this, so here I have my exchange rate client, I'm using an HTTP client that I'm injecting here because I'm making an HTTP call to this service called fixer.io that does the currency exchange from one base currency to another. So I just have this really simple example where I'm making that HTTP call and I'm returning back the rate that they give me. But if I actually wanna test this, not something else that's depending on this, but I actually wanted to test my exchange rate client, I could actually go and hit fixer.io. But me, I have different things where I actually want to test more about the response and how I'm deserializing or the different response codes that I get back. So how would you go about doing that? There is no IHTP client. What am I supposed to do with this? Well, there kind of is because HTTP client accepts an HTTP message handler that I'm defining here that you pass into your HTTP client when you create it. And you're probably familiar with this if you've done any testing around the HTTP client. So I can create my own HTTP message handler and I can give a specific response back. So in this case, I'm just returning the response of what the fixer.io, that service, a valid response that it's returning just to illustrate. 
And then what I can do is when I create my tests, I'm creating my exchange rate client, and when I'm creating my HP client, I'm actually passing in that handler, and I'm just passing some values of what my expectations are. So that I can assert that, yes, my HP client sure is being called, it's getting, it's serializing, uh, deserializing the data correctly, and I could have a bunch of different uh, tests on this, on different status codes that I'm returning, without actually really having to hit fixer.io or whatever endpoint we're actually uh, consuming. Now the second part of this may be, well, okay, that's great, but we have a lot of these calls. I don't wanna to have to create all these different uh, test handlers. So maybe you can at that point decide, maybe you wanna take a dependency on something that makes this a little bit more feasible. In my example here, just a shout out to mock HTTP, just kind of provides a little bit more of a fluid way to do this, is I'm using this library as a dependency and I'm saying, okay, when I make a request to this particular URI, Here's gonna be my response. And then we just use mock HTTP to get our HTTP client, which is pretty much doing the exact same thing that I illustrated. And we can continue on with our testing for that implementation. I'm hoping this video illustrated that you have different options. You don't always need to create interfaces for everything and you don't always need to create mocks. You have different options, different abstractions like delegates or kind of changing your design so that you're moving calls up the call stack and rather having parameters where you're passing values. Again, this isn't about an anti-mock video or any of the sorts. I kind of believe that mocks are appropriate in certain places, creating stubs and even easier when you have something like a delegate are really useful. It's about having options, just realizing that not everything needs to be done the exact same way. Find out what's appropriate in each given context. It kind of really will, I think, thinking about it, improve your design. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to chat with other software developers about software architecture and design and topics like this, Make sure to join my channel where you can get access to a private Discord server and any source code that I show in any video. To join, check the links in the description. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.